I love Quantrix and I want to make you a Quantrix master. Go to QuantrixAuthority.com to learn more. Hey, welcome back to another netcast. I'm Rich Lopez, Quantrix Authority. Sincerely appreciate you joining me today for episode number 250, Multiple Ifs in Quantrix. I am going to show you something that I think is absolutely fantastic in Quantrix. I'm not necessarily going to use the if statement, but if I had a multiple, say, criteria if statement, or just a really a, a complex if statement, this is how I would do it in Quantrix. And Quantrix makes it so much easier than that lesser program, also known as Excel. I, uh, I love this trick, and I, of course, since it's a special episode, uh, 250, I've done 250 of these. I wanted to pull out maybe, you know, all the stops to show you something cool that Quantrix can do very easily and very elegantly, if you will. I have here a list of part codes and product groups. And what I want to do is I want to group these part codes and product groups based off of maybe the part code, maybe the product group itself, and maybe whether or not the product group is part of, you know, any one of these groups listed here, I'm going to give it the product group of resin. So what I've done is I've written out in long form the logic that I want to apply in order to get this product group roll up. And what I want to say is that if the part code is equal to 323, then the product group is going to be raisin pits. If it's 311, then it's going to be root beer extract and so on. One part though, is that if the product group is in this list right here, then I want it to return resin. And if it doesn't meet any of this other criteria, then just go ahead and bring back the product group that is listed. So how do you do this in Quantrix? This very complex logic. Well, I would do it first by writing a switch statement. So in order to do this, we go and we say our product group rollup is equal to switch. The beauty of switch is that it evaluates each condition and returns a value. So these can be unrelated conditions, condition one versus condition two. They can be completely different and not related to each other. And that's really kind of this logic. Yes, the first three are related, but really the second is not related to the first uh, example up here as far as logic goes. So a condition, a switch statement is perfect for this. So first off, I would say switch part code is equal to 323. Then I would call it raisin pits. If my part code is equal to 311, we would call it root beer extract. And for the sake of uh, the video and time, I'm not going to do the third criteria, but you could do 31170 and call it soft serve base. So if I go ahead and I were to simply end this switch statement, we could see that indeed 311 is root beer extract and 323 is raisin pits. Well, what happens when I have these resins, any product code that is in this list here of resins? I want it to return resin. How do I get it to do that also in this logic? What I would then do is I would write, maybe I'll add just another column. And I would say column 38 is equal to select. And what do I want to select? I want to select this guy. And what I want to have as my key list is also this guy. And my lookup value is going to be the product group that I'm on. If I go ahead and do that, what happens here? I can see that RPP is listed here as RPP, but I want it to come back as resin. So in order for this to work, I would say something like this. I would say, is empty list. And what this does is this goes out and it's an Boolean operator and it says, did this select statement return an empty list? And in this case of RPP, that is false. It did not return an empty list. It returned RPP. So it is false, right? So hence a zero. Whereas this, this is an empty list. So it, it is true. 
And as to not confuse this with ones and zeros per se, and really I want the opposite of ones and zeros, I want this one to evaluate to being true, and this one to being false because RPP indeed is in this list, I would simply put a not in front of that. And when I do that, you'll see that my RPP now becomes my one. And I think I've got a few others here. Uh, that's still RPP. Oh, resin is also listed as one. So it looks like it's working beautifully. So I'm just going to simply take this not here and this is empty select list, and I'm going to place it right in here. And the condition when that is met, the condition that I want it to return is going to be resin. And let's see if I got my parentheses correct on that. So if I scroll up, you can see that indeed RLDP is resin, ROPTPP is indeed resin, just as I would expect. And the last thing I have here is since that uh, the part code does not equal this or this, and this uh, product group is not part of this group over here, then I want it to bring the product group back. So therefore, I can say that my default simply is, because I have this default value here, is simply my product group. And let me throw in a comma here, actually, to separate my elements. And then I should, should see it work beautifully. I'm going to get rid of column 38. I'm going to get rid of this guy here. And then I see, yep, those look like all resins here. RBOPP, the reason why this probably isn't coming back as resin is because that is a lowercase. But once it becomes an uppercase, it goes to resin. And you can see that, indeed, this part code doesn't match any of that criteria. This product group does not fit in this list over here. Therefore, the product group is coming back as listed here. So that is how you can do a multiple condition select or multiple criteria, not select, but a multiple criteria if statement within Quantrix Modeler. And I just think that is absolutely fantastic. Really shows you the power of Quantrix, as well as I think this is pretty uh, easy for a lay person to be able to come in here and decipher exactly what is going on with this formula instead of having you know multiple ifs nested inside of each other and trying to keep track of parentheses you can do it really easily here with the plain english in quantrix and really matches back to the logic that you have in your head right it really translates well over here to this logic in the formula also, another thing you could do if you wanted to add a little bit of documentation in here is you could simply put in this code here. And I'm using some key, keyboard shortcuts, Control Shift, uh, Forward Whack. And what that does is that that just adds my logic really in English or in plain terms here as I had listed over here. And that's indeed what the formula is doing. So I hope you found that useful. If you have any questions about Quantrix, there's very few things that I've seen Quantrix can't handle. So I'm sure I can help you. So feel free to reach out to me at quantrixauthority at gmail.com with your questions. I want to make you a Quantrix master. So please join me again for another episode of Quantrix Authority with Rich Lopez. Today's podcast is brought to you by... Quantrixauthority.com. I love Quantrix and I want to make you a Quantrix master.